What even is an H engine? Well, we're about to find out amongst many others, be it emissions, regulations, or adventurous spending, here are five car engines we will never see again. The H16 engine developed by BRM in 1966 for their Formula One car is an H16 engine, which probably is going to be the weirdest thing to ever exist in the history of cars. First off, what the hell is an H layout? Like, forget the 16 cylinder part. We have 16 cylinder engines. That's not the surprising part, but the H, bro. Basically, the H layout is when you stack two flat engines on top of each other and link them to a single transmission. So you kind of have to envision it more as a sideways H, not like a normal upright H, so that's probably where it's actually getting its name from. In the case of the H16, it was two flat eight engines that were stacked atop each other, and BRM's motivation for doing so was kind of just out of experimental curiosity for what would be good for the next generation of F1 engines. Most companies were betting on replacing their V8s with V12s, but BRM, I guess, must have had one too many at their local pub because these mad lads came up with the H16 instead. While the H16 was perhaps one of the most unique sounding cars ever made and probably had the meanest growl that you will ever hear from an F1 car, You probably shouldn't have to have me tell you why we don't see them anymore, but I'm going to tell you anyways. It had way too many vibration problems, and not the good vibrations kind. The oh no, I accidentally shook too many bolts out of my engine kind, and now my pistons are catastrophically detaching themselves mid-race. Yeah, that was an actual thing that happened. The engine layout was way too complex. Two independently operating engines that are sharing a drivetrain, but other than that, they all have their own independent supporting systems, which doesn't mean double the reliability, but rather twice the likelihood of engine failure. No amount of counterweights or firing order management could save the sheer vibration this beast put onto the small F1 frame. And all of this trouble just to make 395 horsepower at 10,250 RPM, which not gonna lie, that's a wickedly high RPM for a 16 cylinder engine to rev to. But again, it's gonna be short lived because the engine is probably going to blow up right after. Seeing as to how the H platform saw little success in racing, it's unlikely a production car would ever use its layout. On a happier note though, not all H engines have gone extinct and the engine layout is actually still found amongst several aircraft most commonly used in the H24 layout. Anyways, I know that someone memed in one of my shorts about how if a high cylinder engine becomes progressively harder to balance, like the V14 that I talked about, what if you just keep adding cylinders until you reach something ridiculous like 20 or 24 where it becomes mathematically achievable to balance again even if it's not practically sensible to do so. And I know you were memeing and I know I was memeing when I pinned your comment, but after researching the wacky H16, it turns out the logic of just keep adding cylinders does actually work for the H platform because the H24 is far more reliable, far more successful, and far more abundant than any other H platform out there. So you were definitely onto the something with that, you know? So don't build an H engine unless you literally go big, like all the way to 24. Otherwise you're not going home because, well, the engine's gonna break down and then you won't be able to go anywhere because that means you're not going home. Moving on now. VR5 slash V5 engine. V5 was an attempt to make something faster than a V4, but lighter and more compact than a V6. While six cylinder motorcycles do exist, they tend to be too heavy and bulky in the frame, mostly reserved for touring motorcycles as opposed to all out sports vehicles. Meaning that four cylinders have basically ruled the racetrack for decades at this point because they were balanced, compact, and they're still one of the best, if not the best performance layout for motorcycles as well. The amount of power they make for how much they weigh was just fantastic. The only reason V5s existed is probably for the same reason the H16 existed. Some racing team had way too many beers than they should have gotten and decided, yo, if four is so good, but six is too big, what about five? And with that birthed the ideology of the V5. But wait, we're not done because now Volkswagen wants a turn. Only this time, they are gonna take an inline five and just kind of stagger it out a little bit. And unlike a motorcycle, this will be going into a car where hopefully the vibrations won't be as annoying. Many purists to this day though, kind of doubt the VR5's classification as a V5. You know, even though Volkswagen marketed it as such, even though it's labeled as such, according to them, it's more similar to an inline five and not in the good kind of way because an in inline five is just a way better engine. Let me explain. So the VR5 has a 15 degree V layout paired with its staggered layout, meaning that it has two cylinders that are offset from the main three, hence staggered. And it is not an even stagger because duh, it's an odd number, meaning that one side of the engine just de facto weighs more than the other side and will just have more moving components than the other side. And with that statement alone, you can probably 
definitely tell what the next issue that we're going to talk about that manifested. Oh, wow, look, it was bouncing. So bouncing these engines and getting rid of their vibrations was near impossible and made even worse by the fact that these two offset cylinders in the main three did not even like share the main crankshaft the way that it does in any other vehicle. So in any other like V layout, the crankshaft is basically met almost perfectly down from the center line of each cylinder. In the VR5, the center line of the cylinders on each side do not meet, at, they don't meet each other at the crankshaft at the bottom. Suffice to say, there was no loyal customer base for this layout and constant vibrations caused parts to move out of place and a lot of mechanics to this day refuse to work on this engine, both due to lack of knowledge and also due to the fact that it's just, there's no real way to fix it because it hardly worked in the first place. The last production cars to use a V5 were the VR5 Volkswagens from the mall year 2006. I've got a lot of comments from people who said that they've owned these types of cars. It did indeed vibrate a lot, but more importantly and more dishearteningly, when anything wrong happened to it, they practically had to abandon the car because no one knew how to fix it because the V5 is such a rare layout. And that's further compiled onto the fact that even if someone did know how to fix it, they would just straight up tell you it's a very difficult engine to fix, so it's going to be really expensive to fix, and most people just decided to just sell their car instead. Another entry from Volkswagen, the W8 engine. Only 11,000 Volkswagen Passats were ever equipped with a W8 engine, with the final one being made in 2004. So the W8, despite being a decent idea on paper and the actual engine being mathematically possible to balance, was plagued with several issues. It was more so of just the actual issue of it being, well, a W. <laughs> Basically, it just suffered from growing pains, which is why Volkswagen would never use this W8 for any of their other vehicles. However, all the lessons they learned from its failure were eventually rolled into its successor, the W12. The W12 would go on to be used in many vehicles even to this day. It's most commonly found in Bentleys, Volkswagens, the even more insane W16, however, would find its way into the most iconic hypercar of our generation, being the Bugatti Veyron, and used again in its successor, the Bugatti Chiron, as well as many other variations of Bugattis. The W8 Volkswagen Passat walked, so the Bugatti W16 could run. While being a rather absurd layout to use in a car, the insane levels of engineering actually triumphed this time over the difficulties of the W platform. So while we may never see a W8 engine ever again, I'm more than happy with the fact that W engines even exist at all and surprisingly ended up being a big W overall in terms of its engine layout and its potential and the awards that it would later win amongst various cars it's used in. The inline 8 engine. So unlike most engines in this video, this one actually was not a quirky layout. It was actually fairly common roughly a century ago, being used in Bugattis, Alfa Romeos, even just various passenger vehicles such as the Packard's motor sedan, which fun fact was also the last ever vehicle from the United States to ever use an inline eight in 1954. It was a necessary step for piston ev engine evolution, but it was ultimately doomed to be a middle step because it was better than the other engines that it was starting off as. Like old inline fours weren't as powerful as old inline eights, which is why the inline eight back then was made to begin with. Inline fours ended up progressing at a faster rate than the inline eight could. And eventually people found out that putting eight cylinders into a V layout was far more efficient. And that's why V eights ended up completely replacing straight eights. But we wouldn't have tried eight cylinders had we at least not attempted the inline eight first. That is why I respect this engine. And unfortunately, while you'll never find it anymore in cars, you'll still find it in various tractor models made in the 70s and 80s. And for the final engine in this video, this one is kind of a cheat because the reason we'll never see this engine ever again in cars is because we never even saw it to begin with in cars. But what if I told you we almost did? The McLaren F1 concept was originally supposed to use a V14. The reason they settled on a V12 was mostly due to cost and also, did you want to guess the other reason we've been talking about it this entire video? <laughs> Balancing. It always has to do with those cool vibrations, or in this case, the not so cool vibrations. A V14, when divided by two, is seven, which is an odd number. So basically, you have to balance two separate inline seven engines, which has never been done before, and there's a good reason for that. So before someone mentions the whole V10 divided by 2 equals 5 because I talked about it into my short and by the way if you haven't seen my shorts you should definitely go check them out. Uh, shout out to everyone who has seen that short but I'm finally going to answer why that works and why it doesn't work here. Inline 5s do exist which is why when you put two inline 5s together in a V formation to make a V10 it still exists. More importantly they can both be cleanly divided by 720. Why 720? That's because most modern engines are a four stroke cycle whereas a traditional two stroke cycle is 360. Why 360? Because 360 
360 is the amount of degrees in a circle, so hopefully you learned that back in school, but for the sake of brevity, I'm going to vastly oversimplify why V14s do not work in cars, but why V10 will. So take 720. As I said, most modern cars are balanced around this number because of the four stroke cycle. Divide that by five. Boom, it works evenly. You get the number 144. Take 720 again, divide that by 10. Boom, 72. Also evenly divided. That is why inline five works, and that's why two inline fives in a V10 layout can also work. They are evenly balanced. They resulted in a nice even number. Now let's take 720 and divide that by 14. What do we get? Pain. That's what we get. Also known as 51.4285. I'm just going to stop there. So as you see, we not only is this not an even number being 51, it's not even a whole number. It's an extremely jumbled mess of decimals. Divided by seven also is not a whole number being 102.857. Again, I'm not going to continue too much beyond the decimal point. So an inline seven is also not possible to balance evenly. You can only balance a seven or 14 cylinder engine at as best to your capabilities possible, but no matter what, you're gonna just get some vibration and wonkiness with them. By the way, just so you don't have to do this on your second monitor, I'm actually just gonna show on screen right now, you can feel free to pause it, a whole bunch of other numbers divided by 721 through 24. You'll see that even wacky things like V18s are theoretically possible to balance evenly. We've also already learned that 20 and 24 cylinder engines were a thing from the first entry, again, mostly in planes and ships, but yeah, those also evenly divide. Seven and 14, are kind of just awkward middle children sandwiched between a 6 and an 8 that work or a 12 and 16 that also work. Hell, you can actually even use 720 divided by 15 and that evenly divides into 48. So someone should make an inline 15 and I guarantee if enough patience you can actually balance it. Of course, it's not practical to make an inline 15 from a performance or mission standpoint, but it is mathematically possible to still balance it and therefore have it be somewhat reliable and not grenade itself immediately. So get to building an inline line 15. And if you don't do it, then I will in Minecraft, like the super cool V14 I already made. And you don't have to have me tell you that I have not managed to balance this engine because no, it's not a skill issue. As we discussed, it is literally mathematically impossible to balance it evenly. So using my Minecraft redstone build as a diagram, if you look carefully, yes, you are going to see that two pistons will occasionally fire at the same time as one another. That's not optimal from a vibration reduction or reliability standpoint. But again, it's literally impossible to balance a V14 evenly. Therefore, you kind of just have to live with this phenomenon. This vibration is merely part of the quirks and features of a V14, which is why McLaren decided not to use one in their F1 after all. The funny thing is though, in spite of all the flaws the V14 has, it's actually used in real life a lot, quite frequently too. So the many ocean faring ships use V14 diesel variants. Anyways, that's it for this video. And if you'd like to see me use more Minecraft Redstone to illustrate engines and make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, share this video to share it, and hit that bell harder than a villager does during a pillager raid. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Blade Angel out.